from a practical point of point of view, I think the first thing is to make sure for whenever we have a recovery that soil fertility, both on grazing ground, any any green paddocks in particular, and second coast silage ground is up to speed. The nitrogen won't actually work until we get rainfall, uh, but if it's supplied a sulfur can or can products in general, you know, that nitrogen should be should be still there. I think um in the first instance where we're short of grass today. Uh, we'd be strongly recommending that the first way to fill the gap is by using up to 6 kgs of concentrate or even 7 in the parlour. Um, and that is actually what farmers are actually doing on the ground uh, because feed, feed has actually increased uh, a lot more than the use of straights have. If you're up to that, you know, and you're at the point where feeding any more is slowing milking or whatever, the next piece where there's still a gap is to feed maybe 4 to 5 kgs of hulls. So really what we'd be looking at is taking the two of those together of not exceeding 10 kgs. So if we exceed 10 kgs of hulls and concentrate together, we're then into a place where we need to buffer feed with some long fibre material, for example, uh, some, some silage or maybe some of those bales that were made earlier on to keep the room and working. The second point is, at the moment, the, you know, water demand is absolutely much higher than would normally be the case with the high temperatures. And while you'd normally be expecting a dairy cow to be operating in 60 to 80 litres, I think we can safely say at the moment, you would want to be able to supply 100 litres per cow per day or be in a position to do so. Where there's a reasonable amount of grass and cows making 23, 25 litres a day, so we'll call it close to adequate, a three kg feeding rate of your summer sustainer um, uh, 14 is probably the product of choice there. Where cows are making that kind of level, but grass is restricted, and maybe we're short one third of their total requirement in terms of grass, then we'll be looking at feeding six kgs of your lactation sustainer. Uh, that's a 16% protein product, and that would be fairly typical. Some farms in the south are even further short than that. So in that scenario, where they've already, you know, feeding their six kgs plus, we're into supplying some actual um, sci holes or whatever as well. And when we go beyond the 10 kg mark, we're now into feeding some long fiber, haylage, bales, silage, or possibly some alfalfa to, to help to carry the diet. So our view would be that at the moment, sci holes are the best value for money. First of all, they're around 13% protein. They're quite high in energy. They're a very safe feed and they're quite widely available. Beet pulp, an absolutely ideal product, but would be 35, 40 euro per tonne more expensive at the moment, and is quite scarce. Uh, citrus pulp is more than 20 euros more expensive. But when you're on high inputs at the moment of products like citrus pulp, you may not have enough protein in the diet, so that's actually a further complication. So they don't really rate in that scenario. In the meeting. Palm kernel has also been put forward as an option by some people on the ground. First of all, presentation-wise, it's physically a poor-looking product. Sometimes it contains foreign bodies which are easy to take out at a mill level. Uh, it can distort milk processing by influencing the nature of milk fat and the type of milk fat. It has a maximum feeding rate of 2.5 kgs per day, which renders it unpractical for people that are actually short. Also, while it might appear to be good value, it's not handleable to put it through blowers and it's not handleable to put it out through the mill to actually load those blowers in the first place. Um, and it's quite unpalatable um, and should never be any more than kind of 10% in the total diet. And when it's there actually synergistically, it works quite well with other products, but just it's not ideal for straight feeding. So if I was to summarize the kind of take home messages would be, our first objective is to use our best endeavors endeavours to prevent acceleration uh, of lactation decline. Our next step to, to achieve that, we need to bridge any gaps in dry matter intake with power feed first, then with straight inclusion, and then with buffer feeding, silage, or maybe if we have to graze some of the second cut. The straight of choice here is very much sire hulls in terms of value, availability, and nutritional suitability. Um, I'm not for a minute knocking beet pulp or citrus, they just don't represent value right now, the products are fine in themselves. Palm kernel is not ideal for the, for the reasons I've mentioned. Buying a standing crop of wheat to turn it into whole crop is very limited in time opportunity and not particularly good value. May however 
be a sensible option on a local basis um, where the logistics and so on stack up and where there's a critical need to have extra fodder for the winter. I'd say our focus, particularly as, we, as the drought issue resolves itself when it does, will be to try and grow more grass and conserve more silage over the months ahead and back into the back end of the year.